US turn. We're down one from the conceal. So we want to rally. Um, and we can't, that rally card, it's split card, look at that, it's actually a coward card for the Americans. So can't use that one. Disappointing. So thinking in terms of broader strategy here for the Americans, right? They're down a little bit, okay? And we keep having trouble with this group here, the low morale firebase. It's just getting hammered almost every time, and we're having to rally them almost every time. Um, for our maneuver group, they're high morale, but you know, they're, if they push forward, they're going to be running into the Germans here who are already at three. So we would have to um, close with them and destroy them to get to four, to range shit four, right? So it's not relative range four that you went at, it's range shit four. Um, and the fire base is unbroken. So we're going to have trouble. So I think we need to change strategy a little bit here. I was hoping that something would turn around. Maybe we get a few fire cards, do a little crossfire of our own, especially at this guy who's a little closer. He hasn't been there that long, I know, but it hasn't happened for us yet. So new strategy. We're going to retreat, maybe lure him in to try to get to you know, relative range four, and maybe transfer a few people to make our to you know strengthen our fire base again and hope that maybe you know the, they'll take the bait, try to get to relative range four, and we can take them out there, make it too tempting a target. And it is going to be tempting, I think, and dangerous for the Americans too, to try to reconsolidate this way. Transferring people we saw, that, that can be disrupted. So, and even at relative range one, which the Germans will be at, they're going to have nine points of firepower, right? So they're not going to be helpless. But what's happening here isn't working. So it's time to try something different. We're probably about halfway through deck two. So about halfway through the game, assuming nothing else ends the game. So we're going to change tactics. Okay? And I'd, I'd be interested to hear other people's thoughts and what they would do in this same situation once your fire base is you know, taking down a few pegs because it, it, it it's going to happen frequently, you know? <laughs> All right. So um, another option we have, maybe before we move backwards, do you see this movement card here? This flank, it says flank on the side. Flanking is interesting, okay? So remember how I talked about how, uh, you know, group A's kind of in a column with Borders to the left and right. Group B, same thing. They don't cross sides really, but they have freedom of movement even laterally within their column, so to speak, within their boundaries. Well, with a flank card, you play it sideways and declare that you're flanking, right? Okay. I mean, flank is to the side, right? Is what it means. When you flank someone, you're kind of coming at them from a side. Well, with a flank card, you can play a flank card if you are directly across from someone. Well, actually, I take that back. You can play a flank card if a group, an enemy group in an, an adjacent group. So let's make this concrete, right? I have my American group A here that I'm thinking about playing a flank card on, OK? Um, adjacent enemy would then be group B, right? If that adjacent enemy has someone blocking them or across from them, in this case, they do, right? Group German group B has my American group B across from them. They can be flanked. So what my American group would be doing is kind of moving sideways and aiming you know, at their side maybe a little bit more than they are from their normal firing position. What the effect of flanking is, is that my firepower is doubled. So... This group here that we think we calculated they had nine, um, they had nine at relative range three. At relative range two, they have one, two, three, three. So they'd be at a grand total of six. <laughs> but they, if they were to flank, they would have a six firepower. So if we were closer, that might be something that's a little more effective to do. Um, here, it doesn't look like it would matter. 
So, but something that crossed my mind. Sometimes you can muster kind of a surprise flank attack, and it's um, more powerful. But at six, I don't think it's going to do us any good. So we're going to fall back. And we're going to fall back with the flank card. I think it's more likely that they might drop something on us, a stream, for example, that we'd have to forward. So retreat is played this way. You rotate twice. So you can see it's pointing this way. I am now going to decrease the range. I'm at range zero now. The smoke stays and the wall stays. So if we were to be shot at here, taking both those modifiers, okay? So let's say the guy straight across from us, it'd be minus two for the wall, minus one for the smoke will put us at minus three, plus one for the movement. So we'd still be at a minus two, not a bad way to move. And then that's it. We can't muster 16 or 17 points of firepower. So that's all we're going to do. Hopefully we'll draw some rally cards. And it's going to be the German turn.